Welcome to this discussion on Secure Ninja Cyber Intelligence and Cyber Counterintelligence Training powered by Treadstone 71. My name is Yoshiko Ninja. We read in the papers the investigations around malware such as Stuxnet, Flame, Dooku and Mahdi. They are in the news daily with detailed code examples and methods of movement within the target information systems and devices. Antivirus companies, managed security firms and cybersecurity consultancies all discuss the capabilities and functions of the malware of the day. They discuss the technical acumen and unique capabilities of the code marveling at the comprehensive nature of the cyber weapon and the thoroughness of the developers. They and others release the code for open source reviews. They solve the issues with the malware releasing warnings, signatures and engine updates, and new detection and prevention methods all in the name of stopping the highly functional code. The focus is on the technology. The solution, always reported to be a technology. What really needs to be discussed though is the methods of intelligence collection, production, analysis and delivery that lead to such ingenious software to be developed and targeted. Because when you really look at the issue, Stuxnet, Flame, Dooku and Mahdi are in and of themselves, nothing more than the payload of the overall program. But Flame has changed things a bit. Let's take a look at Flame. Flame has been called a sophisticated cyber espionage toolkit. Flame had a command and control or C and C structure with more than 80 different domains. The C and C domains were registered as far back as 2008. With the majority of the domains being registered with GoDaddy, Five of the servers examined were running Ubuntu Linux and had ports 22, 443 and 8080 open. Flame utilized fake Microsoft certificates to redirect machines to a fake system update that would install the full version of the virus. Flame would initially infect a few devices. Once the information obtained was analyzed, Flame would remove itself from devices producing the least valuable information. Targeting would then move on to other devices identifying high-value targets. Flame's self-removal and specific information targeting allowed it to go undetected. The C and C structure went offline after an antivirus firm disclosed the existence of the malware. Flame's main target was the Middle East. It is estimated there are 185 targets in Iran, 95 in Israel and Palestine, 32 in Sudan. 29 in Syria and 18 in Lebanon. The primary operating system infected was Windows 7, 32-bit followed by Windows XP. It was determined that Flame did not run on Windows 7, 64-bit. There were several versions of Flame. All the versions observed had the same password. Flame also functioned as a Bluetooth beacon using Bluetooth devices to collect information about discoverable devices. Flame can be related to other versions of malware, namely Stuxnet and Duke, based on their structures and targets. The data Flame extracted included AutoCAD drawings, summaries of PDF and text files, emails, audio recordings and what was described as interesting or high-value files. It is suggested that Flame's capture of audio came after other malware targeting email communications made officials conduct more face-to-face -face meetings to share information. Many of the infected devices were related to Iranian infrastructure, specifically energy. The information captured by Flame was specific and targeted. The significance of targeting AutoCAD files could indicate the intention to collect intelligence about facilities, engineering designs, level of nuclear development, infrastructure design and location of critical elements. Audio recordings could be used to identify persons involved with the planning, design, creation, implementation and maintenance of the facilities and critical elements. Essentially Flame collected information regarding Iran's nuclear capability better and more accurately than other means of intelligence gathering. Had Flame not been detected it would still be collecting and reporting intelligence back to command and control servers. Flame wasn't the first tool of its type and it certainly won't be the last. Stuxnet was primarily a sabotage program, whereas Flame was primarily an espionage program used for targeting self-determination and collection. 
flame can be seen as an extension of the cyber intelligence life cycle able to determine targets based upon ontologies and machine code that provides a level of artificial intelligence required to seek out data points of value. It follows a strict targeting package determining value while sifting through files, much like the traditional sifting through the papers on someone's desk looking for specific information before moving on to the next drawer or cabinet in the room. Once value is determined, data is collected and transmitted back to C and C devices for production, analysis and recommendations and opportunities. These recommendations and opportunities could be additional payloads such as Stuxnet or even physical payloads. Regardless, Flame demonstrates a new level of thinking as in cyber intelligence as we move to the virtual manifestation of the physical trade craft. There are years of historical and technical data required to be mined and understood when it comes to Stuxnet. In order to understand what to target and where to direct the payload, the program that created the payload would have to study historical, cultural, technical, architectural, and electrical data points at the very least. Everything about the Bush Air nuclear facility would need to be known starting with its roots in 1974 and the underlying architecture begun by the German contractor Siemens. They would also need to understand the changes proposed in 1995 by Russia when they signed an agreement to provide support to complete the project. They would need to know the ins and outs of the Russian Adams Troy Export Company and the Leningrad Metallurgy Plant, both associated with providing support, manpower and technologies to complete the Bush Air Plant. We can continue this conversation but I believe you understand this would go on for days as we cover each and every aspect of everything associated with the Bush Air Power Plant. The idea here is to understand the depth and enormity of the effort required to execute a plan of the magnitude required to surgically create and place the Stuxnet payload. It is all based upon intelligence, whether it is Stuxnet or Flame. Intelligence is the driving force behind the espionage and sabotage program perpetrated against the Bush Air facility. It is not different from physical activities experienced during the Cold War when physical agents would infiltrate foreign countries, penetrate critical facilities subsequently stealing information and sabotaging the target facility or technology. What has changed is the methods of infiltration and penetration as well as the ability to sabotage without physical harm to humans. At least in this case, the courses taught by Secure Ninja in Cyber Intelligence and Cyber Counterintelligence represent the virtual manifestation of the physical tradcraft. This introductory course examines the cyber intelligence life cycle as well as the availability and use of open source intelligence tools to support the improvement of organizational, cyber operational security or cyber opsec. Students will be able to understand the cyber intelligence life cycle, the role and value of cyber intelligence relative to online targeting and collection, and modern organizations, businesses, and governments at the completion of this course. In addition, students will understand the use methods of only anonymity, the fundamentals behind cyber intelligence collection and analysis and how these current methods can be employed in their organizations to assist in cyber opsec and in their defense against adversaries. Most organizations do not monitor their online postings with cyber opsec in mind. Online postings across multiple protocols and web functions might allow your adversaries an opportunity to interpret or piece together critical information. Adversaries use multiple and overlapping collection efforts targeted against all sources of your organizational and employee information. America's enemies scour blogs, forums, chat rooms and personal websites to piece together information that used to harm the government and commercial organizations. Learning about cyber intelligence, open source intelligence and cyber opsec effectively equips students with the tools to gather data points, transform these data points into actionable intelligence that prevents target attacks. Students will learn of measures to identify, repel, or neutralize targeted intelligence gathering against organizational assets. Methods of prevention will help reduce your internet, web and web 2.0 attack surface. 
Open source intelligence is an untapped discipline that can be used to enhance operational security of your organization's online presence while preventing least path of resistance penetration into your organizational environments. In order to protect your online information and reputation, you first must understand the methods of targeting, data gathering and collection, data production, analysis and written delivery. This intense course covers all aspects of the cyber intelligence lifecycle focusing on the use of open source tools to gather readily available Internet and Web 2.0 data. The data points are then organized into a profile for analysis into actionable intelligence and used to reduce your attack surface and prevent additional data loss. The focus is on relevant information that can be obtained legally and ethically from the public and private sector and that is not classified in its origin or processing. The information may become classified in relation to the student's organizational intent or its association with classified information when it is rightly blended into all source intelligence reports. Open source data is the raw print, broadcast, oral debriefing or other form of information from a primary source. It can be a photograph, a tape recording, a commercial satellite image, or a personal letter from an individual. Open source information is comprised of data that can be put together, generally by an editorial process that provides some filtering and validation as well as presentation management. Open source information is generic information that is usually widely disseminated. Newspapers, books, broadcast, and general daily reports are part of the open source information world. Open source intelligence is information that has been deliberately discovered, discriminated, distilled, and disseminated to a select audience in order to address a specific question, in this case organization online OPSEC. Open source intelligence, in other words, applies the proven process of intelligence to the broad diversity of open sources of information, and creates intelligence that is actionable and can be used to improve cyber defenses and strategies. At the end of the course, students are armed with the knowledge and tools necessary to start a cyber OPSEC program for their organizations. The adversary devotes significant resources to monitor your operations and activities on a daily basis. They can produce reliable information on your capabilities, intentions, and vulnerabilities. Adversaries are also shifting the emphasis in targeting. Foreign targeting of American technology is increasing for economic as well as military reasons. Technology transfer will continue to remain a major concern now and in the future. What you do about can either make or break your current and future strategies. The Cyber Counterintelligence course presents the student with foundational concepts and processes in the discipline of counterintelligence with the focus on counterintelligence missions, defense of counterintelligence, offensive counterintelligence, and counterespionage as these realms apply to traditional tradcraft, and how they are or will evolve into the cyber domain. By starting with traditional counterintelligence and progressing to cyber counterintelligence, the student will develop an appreciation for collection efforts, exploitation of potential threats, insider concerns, and the risks and benefits of counterintelligence with the expanding importance on comprehensive and timely need for intelligence for nations as well as businesses, the student will explore the essential elements that make up the intelligence cycle with a focus on how these pivotal points are exploited. As part of this class the exploration of the continued importance of critical thinking as well as out-of-the-box analysis will be heavily leveraged to improve the critical thinking skills of the students. As cyber topics continue to evolve, the increased importance of cyber intelligence is growing and as such the protection of our intelligence cycles will expand as well. Emphasizing the growing need to ensure our processes are not compromised in a cyber-dominated landscape, cyber counterintelligence is one aspect and possibly one of the most crucial topics at the core of protecting our collection efforts. Legal, ethical, and privacy issues will be discussed given the inherent nature of the intelligence cycle. The potential for active defense or offensive cyber counterintelligence operations will be covered. The course will rely heavily on individual research and group discussion to explore the world of cyber counterintelligence, and where applicable, 
make use of the student's ability to do independent thinking and analysis of in-class problems. At the end of this course, the student will be able to understand the role and value of counterintelligence in modern organizations, businesses, and governments. They will be able to identify key elements of in-cyber intelligence targeting and apply the cyber counterintelligence process to mitigate threats of information disclosure for core business processes. Students will understand the fundamentals behind currently employed computer security technologies relative to cyber counterintelligence, review active defense and issues in offensive cyber operations. Ultimately, the student will be able to examine potential measures to identify, penetrate, or neutralize hostile operations that use cyber means as the primary trade craft methodology, as well as intelligence service collection efforts that use traditional methods to gauge cyber capabilities and intentions. From site and source reliability guidelines, analysis writing assessments and intelligence assessment guides to SOC puppets, denial, deception counter-denial, and counter-deception, anonymity and psychological operations. Students of the Secure Ninja courses powered by Treadstone 71 experience cutting-edge training that is unique, new and timely. We teach the methods required to prepare for programs that can be long-term in nature. We understand the need for patience in executing cyber intelligence and cyber counterintelligence operations. In fact, some of our students have been running operations for well over a year. Operations started in our classes. If you want to learn from the best and learn the virtual manifestation of the physical trade craft, if you want to understand the data collection, production and analysis efforts it takes to create a program that creates a payload such as Stuxnet or Flame, then sign up now. This is Yoshiko Ninja representing Secure Ninja and Treadstone 71, signing off. You may call me Bob. For more information, visit the Secure Ninja website at www.secureninja.com or the Treadstone 71 website at www.treadstone71.com. Stay tuned to this channel on the Secure Ninja TV channel for more information on and upcoming certification in cyber intelligence. Thank you for viewing.